In today's video, we're going to be learning about iflet in Rust, which is a less verbose way of handling values that only match one pattern while ignoring the rest. For example, imagine you have a function that allows you to set the brightness for your computer screen. Here we're going to type in function set brightness, and that's going to take a brightness of type option of type I32. And it's not going to return anything, we're just going to set the brightness here. Next, we're going to create our match expression and insert the brightness. And here we only have two cases that we want to handle. So let's handle both of those cases. We'll insert sum, which will take the value, and we're going to print line that the brightness was set to value percent. And for every other case, we're going to do nothing. Also, I just want to mention real quick that from now on, you're going to see inlay hints in all of my videos, or at least I'm testing it out. All it does is tell me what type a certain variable is in gray. It doesn't affect the code in any way, but it helps me out with understanding what type a certain variable currently is. Anyway, going back to the example, here we have a match expression with two arms, one that handles the value if it contains a value, and one that handles every other case. But as you can see in this example, we just want to handle what happens if there is a value. So this can be seen as a bit verbose, considering we don't care about what happens if the brightness is none. Now, just to show you how the function works, we're going to go to our main function and let user input equal sum 10. And this is hypothetical. Of course, we're not taking any user input, but in case we were, we're going to pretend that the user inserted 10 and then we can set the brightness to the user input. Now, if we were to clear the console and then run this in quiet mode, what we should get as an output is that the brightness was set to 10%. If this ever ended up being none, we would get no output. So this works fine, but there's an even simpler approach that we can take. And that approach will use iflet instead. So what we're going to do is create it immediately above the match expression. So you can see the difference. And here we're going to type in if let some value equal brightness, then we're going to print this statement. And that's all it took to achieve the exact same result. So instead of doing match brightness, we're using equal brightness. And the pattern we want to match against will be right here, right after let. So we're practically just creating a match expression with a single arm. Now we can remove this and rerun the code, and we should get the same result as from earlier. And just to change things up, we can change this to 50%, and we will get that the brightness is set to 50%. Otherwise, if we insert none, once again, we're not going to get any output. We can also choose to include an else block when using if let. For example, right now we have this if condition, and right below it, we can add the else block. And then we can print that no brightness was set. So now if we were to clear that, run the code, we'll get 50%. But if this ended up being none, I don't know why I kept on inserting it immediately inside here. But if this ended up being none, we would get that there was no brightness set. So the else block is essentially the same thing as having the underscore arrow followed by the code when you are using a match expression. But let's take a look at another example. And for this example, we will create an enum called crypto, which will contain BTC of type I32 and Ethereum of type I32. Then inside our main function, we can create a coin and let that coin equal crypto BTC. And we're going to insert two Bitcoins. Right below it, we're going to use if let to match against this pattern. So here we can type in if let crypto BTC, and here we'll take the amount, which will end up being this value over here, and check whether we can take that from coin. And if we can, we will print line, you are rich, mate. You have amount bitcoins. Else, we will print the sad truth of no bitcoins. Now we can open up the terminal and run this code once again. And what we should get as an output is that we are rich. We have two Bitcoins. Otherwise, if we changed this to Ethereum, we would get the else block executed because it does not match this pattern, which means everything else will be handled by this statement over here. So we can now run that code and you'll see that it will output no Bitcoins. Or something more accurate to say would be other 
crypto, because once again, this handles every other case. And just for practice, I'm going to create it once again using the match expression. So here we can type in match coin. Then we can define some crypto of type Bitcoin and the amount, followed by the arrow and the code we want to execute. And right below that, we can define the catch all block or the catch all arm and then print other crypto. Personally, in this case, I find this approach to be much cleaner than if you were to use if let with an else block. But if you happen to use if let with a catch all condition that you don't care about, if let could easily end up looking much cleaner. So what's important to remember is that the if let syntactic sugar was introduced to make our lives easier in certain situations. You should not force yourself to use it if you feel like using match would make your code look cleaner. This video was nothing but a mere introduction to if let. We will cover other use cases as we progress with the Rust language, because there will be situations where if let will just be much more preferable than using the match expression. I just can't show you those situations right now because we're still at the beginning of learning Rust. As soon as we start building some projects, I'll be able to give you some more real examples of where if let could be preferable. But for now, all you need to know is that it makes our life a bit easier when we're dealing with catch-all cases that do nothing.